also want to be clear about what we will not be doing. The United States is not going to deploy ground troops into Libya. No ground troops in Libya, the president said. We here at Freedom Watch have long said this was an empty promise, and now the Pentagon confirms it. There are four U.S. troops in uniform on the ground in Libya. The Pentagon claims they're not there for combat purposes, but my next guest, like I, is suspicious. Here to debrief us is former CIA operative Michael Scheuer. Michael, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. Are you surprised that there are troops in uniform on the ground, and are you surprised that the Pentagon has publicly acknowledged it? No, the, the Pentagon had to publicly acknowledge, acknowledge it, Judge, because things have settled down in Tripoli. These people are going to be there. The BBC is going to see them, or, or some other uh, news network is going to see them, so they had to admit it. But I think, you know, very clearly, U.S. Special Forces, CIA paramilitary officers have been on the ground since the beginning, not only helping the resistance, but trying to figure out who the resistance is. And um, now they're desperate to get the embassy reopened, uh, especially after today when the, the head of the new government said they were going to have an Islamic uh, regime there in Libya. Well, I wonder what Mrs. Clinton's reaction was when she learned that the new government that she supported and persuaded NATO to help is going to establish an Islamic republic. Perhaps it'll look something like her friends in Iran. <laughs> well, Mrs. Clinton knows about as much about the Middle East as my chair does. Uh, what she knows is what she believes in, which is kind of a Marxist-Leninist approach to imposing democracy, secular democracy, on anybody who doesn't have it at the moment. Um, she's advancing us, along with Obama and Senator McCain, toward a war of or a clash of civilizations. They're the engines of what's going on. Do they want boots on the ground? Does Michael Scheuer believe that we will have Americans on the ground, whether they're wearing boots or uniforms or something uh, other than that, in order to engage in nation building, something the president and Mrs. Clinton promised they'd never do in Libya? Oh, I think that's where we're going, Judge. The, 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 the belief amongst people like Obama and McCain and Clinton is if they have, if the Muslim population has a, a good lifestyle and good healthy teeth and health care, that they'll turn their back on their faith and uh, become secular pagan Westerners. And, of course, that's not going to happen, but they'll spend inordinate amounts of money to try to make that happen in Libya, in Egypt, in Tunisia, and elsewhere. Last night uh, at the uh, Republican primary debate in Florida, the so-called Tea Party debate, uh, Congressman Ron Paul commented uh, that one of the reasons for 9-11 is the American military presence in the Middle East, an argument that you've made uh, and that I've made and that Congressman Paul and others uh, have made publicly uh, for years. He was booed when he said that. Were you surprised that he was booed by that audience when he made that comment? Well, so I, I think he was booed a bit, but I think more people applauded it when he said it. He was booed after uh, the person carrying the water for Israel, uh, former Senator Santorum, came out and uh, criticized him for saying something that he never said. Ron Paul never blamed America. What he said is America needs to understand the motivation of its enemy. Our enemy started the war, but they were motivated in part, in large part, by our foreign policy. But for the last two weeks, Judge, the pro-Israel newspapers, websites, especially Commentary Magazine, have been attacking Ron Paul as uh, someone who is uh, offering a noxious explanation. And their mes message has been that Mr. Paul uh, uh, blames the United States for 9-11. He never said that. What Ron Paul said is the American people need to discuss their foreign policy. And if they want to have a foreign policy here on out, that continues to motivate our enemies uh, to attack us. Uh, not only abroad, but increasingly young Muslim males within the United States. Why do you think neocons want to uh, silence or, or crush politically Congressman Paul? Because we have no interest in the clash between the Palestinians and the Israelis. There is no interest there for the United States. There are no natural resources. Israel's manpower has never been used to help us do anything. And certainly the Palestinians have ne nothing to offer us. If it was ever explained adequately to the American people, they would realize that we're sticking our nose into an unresolvable religious war that, that only brings America pain in terms of blood and money. And there's also a crunch point coming up. 
the whole Islamist movement, Judge, is going to be rev re revived, if you will, and, and empowered if we block the Palestinians' uh, application for statehood at the UN later this month. Right. Ron, Ron Paul is exactly right. We should just mind our own business. This has nothing to do with U.S. interests. Michael Scheuer, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure.